So yes. you, you should see a browser on the right and on the left, you should see what turn out to be the major categories uh, of the, I guess it's basically the JWiki server file system. So this is the default set of major categories. Yeah. And the way, the way to read this, hang on. The way to read this is there's a, a history, excuse me, not a history, I'm a bar chart running down the left side of the table of contents. And where you see, um, a little bar on the left, a little red bar, that indicates that there are more than one document in this major category. Okay. So in personal taste, for example, there's only one, it's called personal taste. In P invoke, there's only one, it's called P invoke. And as I mouse on it, it loads up on the on the browser on the right. So in that sense, it's very similar to the other, the other demo. New York City J users group has a bunch of uh, documents, so it's got a, a larger bar. I'm going to start at the bottom just because there are some points I want to make. Um, so by default, we can fit as many as three columns of documents in the uh, detail area on the left. So these are all JWiki meeting reports going back to December of 2021. We've got two columns worth of material. I am um, familiar with these. <laughs> I would imagine <laughs> get to something a little richer like vocabulary. There are actually six columns and we can't accommodate those at full width. So what we do is the first column is expanded to full width and there's a gray ribbon running down the left, uh, running down the column. And as long as your mouse stays inside that ribbon, this is the column that will remain expanded. But if you leave the ribbon to the right, the next column expands next and the next and the next and the next. And the idea here is to try to accommodate um, larger numbers of documents and larger numbers of subcategories, like in this case, the absolutely essential terms subcategory, the about new book subcategory, forwards plus and, and whatever else. Now, if we move up a little, uh, there is a category called system. Yeah, I guess that's not really making the point I wanted to make. Um, the basic notion here, the basic notion in general is to try to take all of the subcategories of a major category and all of the document titles of the major category and flatten them out in the detail area. And we can do that as long as there are too many documents and too many subcategories. A point that uh, Raul made last week that was extremely well taken was that the original um, implementation, the original prototype, wouldn't scale very well if we suddenly doubled the document count, for example, or if the um, if the subcategory structures underneath the major categories got richer, it wouldn't really handle it very well. What I'm trying to do here is show that there are ways to handle that well and still preserve a lot of the interactivity that characterized the original demo. We come up here to help. Help has a lot of documents. Uh, and if we open it up, it has so many that we can't actually accommodate them all in columns. And so the approach we take there is simply to take the subcategories and arrange them in an outline form. So we indent as we get to subcategories. And as you touch each subcategory, we arrange the documents in the remaining two columns. Now, a fair question is what happens when you've got more than two columns worth of documents on the right? Let's look at that. Uh, if we go, so all of all of these categories have been the default uh, server category, server file system categories. If we move up to the top, we get to Bob's categories. So community developers, J Playground, newcomers, references, and a wiki. And Bob, I realized just today I may have a crawler glitch. I may not have gotten everything. Apologize yeah. for that. If that turns out to be true. <laughs> um, so if we if we open up references, it's huge. Uh, there are a lot of subcategories, but we have no trouble accommodating them all. And what happens is we squeeze the columns. Uh, so release notes has five columns worth of document titles, but that's okay. They'll they'll expand as we move to the right, and as we touch them, we'll load up the we'll load up the pages. By the way, part of the reason the pages are loading as fast as they are is that I've got a local HTML cache that I'm using. So I'm not actually touching the network when I load up these documents. 
Uh, all right, but there is one incredible category, subcategory, and that is orphans. Orphans is, as far as I can tell, all the otherwise uncategorized pages. And orphans has well over a dozen columns worth. There are several hundred pages. And it still works mechanically. The, the, um, the columns expand appropriately as you move the mouse to the right. But it's not a great experience. Uh, you really can't read enough of the, of the compressed columns to be able to, to, to see anything, to guess at what they might actually contain. Um, so I think probably th there are ways to deal with that. I think probably one way to do it would be to take orphans and create a few synthetic categories underneath it, categories called page one, page two, and page three, for example, each of which would have just a couple of hundred pages in them. And I think that would take care of the problem, but there, I'm sure there are other approaches. Yeah, we could always now, add real I, categories. I'm sorry? We could always come up with new categories and start sticking them in, in these new categories or existing sure, categories. Sure, I, I, I think it's important to distinguish between curation on the one hand and experience delivery on the other. And if your experience is failing, there are two approaches. I, I think the honest approach is to say, I'm going to fix the experience. I'm going to make the experience more sophisticated so it can handle it. And I think the, forgive me, slightly less honest approach is to say, well, it's Bob's problem. Let him fix it. <laughs> okay, um, so. I'm not, I'm not as enamored of that approach. Uh, I'll just stop you there. Because in the case no. of orphans, it is definitely Bob's problem. And I'll tell you why. Because what orphans yeah. are, are just any page that doesn't have a page that refers to above it. So if you think right. about all your, all your navigation bars, nothing goes to a navigation bar as a parent. It's its own thing. So it's an orphan. Now what you see listed is every page that navigation bar touches. And we're looking at all the navigation bars, including Nuvoc. Mm -hmm. So th there's yeah. no way, like Orphans was usable, use, useful when Eric first went and did the web crawl because it allows us to identify pages that might be off on themselves and they're not hooked to anything. But Orphans also applied to navigation stuff, which is there's no way you want to do references into navigation, especially when navigation itself, you basically are going to the thing, you're not just going to the top level, which is the navigation bar, you're going to everything that that's touching. It's it's just not a useful yeah. category. Yeah. All right. So don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. I, I, won't. I won't. We will do a category nav, a hidden category nav, or something like that. To... Something like yeah. that. Yeah, we could do that. We could split them out that way. Yeah. Now I want to contrast this style of navigation, and when I say this, I mean being able to touch. Uh, both super categories, major categories, and within them subcategories, and immediately see all the kids, and then immediately load up those kids with the approach that's taken by MediaWiki. And I don't want to single out MediaWiki, but it's it, it, because it's typical of the web. It's just the way things are. So you've got here a hierarchy, and you can click to open up individual subtopic subcategories. And if you click on a subcategory, you get not pages, but a list of pages, one of which you could click on. And it's, it's incredible. There's only one page here. They could have shown that on the um, uh, on the hierarchy page. So I can dive into here. And the feeling I have uh, is that I've just lowered myself into a cave system. And if this were a working browser instead of just a WD web view, I would use the back button to laboriously crawl my way out back to the list of subcategory pages, back to the category uh, outline as well, which it's actually easier to get there like this. Um, the contrast between that web style of navigation on the one hand and this style on the other, where a very, even a very small mouse movement, and by the way, I'm not clicking, there's, no, there's almost no clicking involved in this interface, a very small mouse movement opens up whole new vistas of information for you to explore. The contrast between the two approaches increasingly strikes me as very stark. And I, I think that a, a big part of the reason that video games, certain kinds of video games are so engaging 
is that they're just incredibly responsive, incredibly fast. And there's something intrinsically engaging about the mere speed with which they respond to your input. And I think the same sort of benefit uh, of engagement could be recruited by an interface like this one. I'm definitely conscious, and this is a biased and individual data point. I've, I've been exposed to more content in the J uh, website in the last week uh, than I have in the last couple of years. It's just so easy to move around. Now, I'm dissatisfied with one thing, which is I'm moving up and down here, uh, selecting pages, and they're not loading in the browser. I would like to figure out why that is and fix it. Um, the left side of the application responds like a video game. The right side responds more like the web, and that's annoying. That's not as engaging as it probably could be, uh, and I would like to fix that. Okay, real briefly, uh, let's talk about search. So search works. It works more or less the way... Uh, it works more or less the way it did in the last version. So you type rank, and now the the... Our graph on the left shows where the hits are. So there are hits down in vocabulary for obvious reasons, quite a few of them. Um, there are hits up in reference, quite a few of them for obvious reasons. And uh, so Orphans has a lot of hits because Orphans includes Nuvoke, release notes, uh, and so on. I kind of like the idea of putting hits in the context of a map with which you become familiar, but I'm not married to the idea. So. There is a search pseudo category up at the top, and that actually shows all the hits that have happened. Oh, okay. Um, and they're categorized. So it effectively works out to the same thing, except rather than poking around in the category map, you get to see them all flat right in front of you. So there's some value to that. And then last point, um, there's a pseudo category, called, super category called Nuvoke, and that behaves exactly the same way uh, as it did last week. So you mouse on a glyph to get a list of valence links and you mouse on a valence link to load it up. And that is the story. And I will just as a coda mention that I, I've done this kind of work before and the best possible outcome of a demo like this one is uh, feedback that leads you to pitch everything you've done and start <laughs> over again from scratch. So with that in mind, if there are any comments or questions, I'd be I'd be very happy to take them now. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. How do you scroll the browser page? Okay, good question. If you click on whatever you're currently link, uh, touching, so I just clicked on sort down, uh -huh. and I go and I load other pages, the page I clicked on becomes the default. So if I leave, if I'm not mousing on any page, it comes back, and then I can scroll. It's not the best interaction, but it's the best I've been able to come up with so far. So if I clicked on raise, uh, or raise in, excuse me. Uh, and then I go and bring up sparse. If I come over here, raise in comes back and I can I can scroll it and I can follow that's, links and so on. That's, pre that's pretty good. The only thing I would want is just a little more feedback that it happened when I clicked, like a, a, back, a, a slight background change for everything else that highlights yeah. the one that I clicked on or something maybe. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, it's, it's entirely hidden. That, that would need to be made more transparent for sure. Thank you. And just to follow up on that, to make it even a bit clearer, is there a way to do almost a, a film over the right side so that when you click on that, that locked page now looks different than the other pages you're scrolling around? Ah, uh, I see. Possibly. Um, I'm not really familiar enough with WD to know whether I can do that, but it's entirely possible. I, I wonder whether it might also make sense uh, when you click on a page, to put a button up above the browser that's just that page title. So the last half dozen pages you clicked on become uh, bookmarks, basically. Yeah, so kind of like, well, not breadcrumbs because you're not following your way back out, but bookmarks is a good example. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. So I think, I think it could be made more transparent. I certainly agree that it needs to be or would need to be. Well, I think that what you gain by making it more transparent and, and seeing multiple things change at one click you're, you're reinforcing that behavior much clearer, more clearly. Mm -hmm. yeah, like a, a little tab system of, of a, a tab queue across the top, kind of like a, the old style browser tabs. In your... Yes. Now, yes, when, we get, we have, doable. when we have this display here, if you click on the, the green heading, what happens? 
Nothing right now. Can you think okay. of something that you'd like to have happen? Nope, nope. I was just, I was just wondering. I kept seeing the headings. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I mean, I, I can see what happens whenever you're over the black. It, I wonder whether it's more, whether it, it's possible when when you look at my category trees, that might be more useful to open a subtree. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I understood that. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, so the page you're on right now, reference, you've got, yeah. uh, say, J602 is highlighted. Mm -hmm. If you were to yeah. click on J602, it would, well, say you clicked on anything. It doesn't have to be highlighted. Anything you clicked on would open up the subtree, the rest of the subtree to that. Ah, so I have miscommunicated something. Okay. All the subtrees are open right now. If, if it looks like a subtree isn't open, that's a crawler glitch. Oh, okay. So the whole part of, I was about to say the whole point, but it's really only part of the whole point, uh, is to show a flat representation of the entire sub hierarchy underneath the currently selected major category. So maybe it's a little clearer if I get rid of this. Um, this is everything under references. Under right. Reference. Okay. Okay. So, bold. so what we were seeing was an artifact of the search. It locks you into the different spots. Yeah. 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 But my, my, one of my goals is to avoid drill down, avoid having right. to drop yourself into that dark yeah. cave complex. Yeah. I, I could really use some criticism. I could use some, this doesn't work. Um, Otherwise, I'm I'm pretty much out of ideas. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's okay if there's not. I'll, I'll take feedback. No, I'm just I, I'll, do, I'll, come, I'll just I'll, I'll come up with something. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we've got lots of ideas. They're just not good ideas. Well, no, you know, it's uh, it's, it's... You know, that's that's absolutely the wrong way to think about it. I. I even bad ideas can be the start of good ideas. Yeah, that's exactly the way I work too. Well, we, before you had a three level um, hierarchy and when you get a lot of columns like this, it might be worth introducing like um, pages that are like um, letters, you know, the initial letter as, as uh, intermediate. And then um, on the right, it scrolls to that point in in the list where, where that- So you're thinking of- Maybe page headings across the top that as you select them, yeah, well, like uh, come on the orphan when, sets of well, columns or when you had orphans, um, go back to orphans here. Orphans. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, it'll be in uh, reference, I think. Yeah. Right. So, so you, orphans. So he, here, if you had like a two, uh, you had a, you could you. You have you have this this um the your your orphans here. I guess it would be actually um a if you could split this instead of having one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen columns, split it mm -hmm. in split the whole thing into two and you have one's a, a fairly narrow thing that's got two a b c d e f, and then when you over two it scrolls you know it, it doesn't it doesn't it it doesn't kind of like on the um, on the far left where you have the 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 um uh, uh magnifying glass effect on, mm -hmm. on the far, uh, uh, have uh, you that I on the far right mean. for for right so you're doing it high, you're doing it horizontally rather, you're doing it horizontally rather than vertically right with with a with a thin narrow it's a quick nav within that right what would you think of the idea I'll, I'll take that and i'll keep that in mind what another notion that i've been kicking around was what if we introduced several synthetic categories under orphans that would basically be the same as what you just described? That way you keep up with the vertical navigation. Um, so there'd be a page one, page two, and page three underneath orphans and indented. Uh, they don't really exist in the hierarchy on the server. They would be, as I say, synthetic as a way of splitting up the, the documents into a more tractable set of columns. Well, they're as synthetic as any other category in that whole tree. I absolutely well, I could them, make them, you know. The, the thing that happens there is over time, as things get added and subtract, your orphans migrate to different pages. So you have a little bit of, of it, it, maybe maybe what we're saying really saying is we don't care a lot about them and we just want to, we just want to have a way of accessing them. In that case, it works. But if we also care about content in orphans, 
then all of a sudden it's going to be hard to read to go back to where you were before after a few months. Oh, of, uh, the, the, the synthetic the synthetic categories wouldn't occur on the server. Bob would have nothing to do with them. They would be no, I mean, generated dynamically by the client. But, but that's necessary. why that's why that's why they would be. It's because they're dynamic that that you lose track because if, if stuff oh, oh, goes oh, oh, out oh, of oh, orphans, it goes into orphans. It's going to move stuff around. You're absolutely right. That's a good point. Although that's true in general of all of the categories, if things move around. But orphans is going to be particularly volatile. That's true. Yeah, well, with pages pages in particular is going to shove. Chef stuff will move, will move to a different page. That's You're what right. doing the category. It will just move a different position within the category. You're right, but it'll still be visible. Interesting. Okay. All right. I'll think about that. Okay. I, this I, was probably I, a. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I think this, I'm not sure whether this is what Raul was touching on, but if you go back over to your left so that we see the layout for the orphans, what about if rather than doing a table essentially of columns, if you took your reduced uh, screen, the horizontal lines and everything, and just put those instead of even worrying about seeing the content, except for as I think, I think we're talking about the same thing, but I think what I heard was Ra was talking about using the magnification to highlight a section of all those horizontal lines, but you don't need to see all of them at one time. No, that's true. Like right now, we're seeing all hmm. the pages all at one time. That's not actually necessary. No, it works for smaller numbers of columns because you actually have a hope of figuring out what they're about, even when they're compressed. Um, but you're right that when, in the case of the orphans, there's really no point. Um, and it's not like your muscle memory is going to kick in and tell you, remind you where something was because uh, again, uh, orphans are going to be pretty volatile. They're going to move around over time. But but if you if if you go right over to your far left and you scroll up and down with your magnification there, it's going so quickly that if you think of that same thing happening off the pages linked to one of your green categories, you get through them very quickly. That's true. That's true. But the same, I don't think you feel like you weren't of... seeing some. Yeah, that's possible. The same I, is true, just though, of just moving horizontally. Or horizontally, yes, you can all see them, but but you're only, uh, and I, given this is a really large group, um, but you're only being able to see part of them with the large group. Smaller groups, it's not as important. It becomes more useful to see them side by side because you can see everything at once. But having such yeah, fast true. response when you go up and down, I'm not sure you lose that much. That's fair. And, and even more so if you're doing a search, because the ones you want to get to are going to be highlighted. Right. You're going to That's know exactly true. where you want to go to. That's true, too. Bob, I have a question for you, and maybe and I'm, I'm fishing here for something to do. What's the biggest problem you face right now? Right now, um, my biggest challenge, and I don't, you know, I, I think I think actually in some ways this may solve that problem because I think it's going to go away. It's going to get around the issues I have with creating these category trees, which was my solution to it. But what those require is an awful lot of content put into established context. And with having Wait, access- I nodded my head, but I'm not sure what you meant by that. Content to establish content. Okay, so if, if I go to uh, one of my category pages, um, and, and I think you touched on it once with one of those, um, uh, what was it, an Android page that only had one page on it. Right. At the top of that page, there's a little little gray blurb that I put in basically saying, this is a category in the future, this will be expanded to link to other categories for more information. That right. area can be expanded to provide context for everything that would be linked below. Uh, I see. So when I'm building my category tree, my biggest challenge is going to be going to each of these categories. And in the case of Jay on Android, I'm sure there'll be other pages come in. But then I have to go and establish context for when why we're going to see those pages. And I can even put the links for those pages up above. That's a ton of work. But I'm having to do that work because I'm trying to build an experience as you descend down your pipeline, right? you are moving away from that experience because it's so darn fast. 
Yeah, I, it's interesting that the pages actually, the actual pages come up about as fast as tooltips do in a conventional system. Yeah. Um, which is nice. I mean, we're habitual. There's a couple of things that I think we've been habituated to uh, that are unfortunate in a way. Uh, we don't like to click on things at some subconscious level, I think, because there's a huge commitment associated with that. We know it's going to load a page and that's going to take time. We know that by loading the page, we're going to lose our orientation, our context, whatever map we're looking at is going to disappear. And we know we're going to have to incur the cost of going back. So that original map page is going to have to be reloaded, reparsed, and re-rendered. And that's going to take time too. And then of course we have to incur the cost of reorienting ourselves because the map disappeared on us and then reappeared. Um, I think we can get away from all of that. Uh, if we can, what we are comfortable doing is hovering. And this is all about hovering. Again, there's no, there's no clicking. And I think that that recruits a, a part of our interaction repertoire that we're a lot more comfortable with. We're very comfortable with hovering. And because hovering gives you the whole page, it, just, it doesn't just give you a little description of the page in the form of a tooltip. Uh, I think that'll dramatically increase people's tendency or willingness to explore, uh, maybe without their even noticing what's happening. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. Um, and then the only, and I, I think you, you addressed it pretty well with the way you're using the clicking to lock down a page so that you can return to it. Um, but what you do have to watch is to make sure that your your click doesn't establish a new mode, right? So it kind of locks things in and now you're hovering, but you don't know that you've locked something somewhere. Yeah. And then your right. next click will lock something else. So the language of clicking becomes more important uh, and you have to maybe signal a little bit more strongly when yeah. hovering is your main mo main mode, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I need to think about the click. That's my that's so far one of my two main takeaways, and I appreciate it. Um, well, and, and the click okay. has I, tremendous yeah. power. It's like the deep click and what the you know Apple abandoned it, but it was a very powerful thing if people had started to use it. That when you press harder, you get a uh, different right. thing. Right. Um, right. It gives right. you another level of of interaction. Of control. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, this is longer than I expected to take, and I apologize. Um, uh, don't apologize. Thank you all very we're, much. We're making it longer.